All right. So hopefully I have no idea what that was all about. So let's see. I'll run some stuff. Background. All right. So anyone watching the replays, uh, the live stream actually just completely shut down. Uh, I don't know why it's the live software, but uh, that's what happened. So this is take two of Monday Run Day. So I'm just going to restart. So welcome to Monday Run Day. And I have no idea what that was, but I did notice um, there were some changes. So I did update my computer last week. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I have no idea what happened. So basically, the app completely blocked out or blacked out. Just like last week, um, the stream ended abruptly, which was very embarrassing. I couldn't thank anyone. Uh, I'm so sorry for that. But I will not touch the computer. I will not uh, be anywhere near the keyboard. So the keyboard and the computer are off limits. I'm not touching that because... Yeah, I can't lose the stream again. I had seven people. I lost them and already had uh, like six likes or so. But hopefully some people funnel back. I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, blame Heath. <laughs> yeah, actually, I met him uh, two weeks ago. Uh, great guy. He set up the uh, event at. Um, let's see, I'm going to move this closer. He set up the event at Northlands, which then I recorded a very long video there. Yeah, gotta love technology, right? I mean, that's insane. And plus, the camera is acting up. So this is the thirteenth stream. Uh, I think this is just appropriate for the thirteenth stream, so nothing's going to go right. But I'm gonna fix the camera so you guys aren't on an angle here. So let's see if I can fix that. Yeah, there we go. Whew. But I apologize for that. It's embarrassing too. I'm trying to make this as professional and. I have fun at the same time, but I, I like to have a you know professional live stream here and it just cuts out, you know, that, that irritates me and it's also going to irritate my viewers. I don't want to put you guys through that. But uh, yeah, so I basically ran up here after work um, and now the lights. That one was acting up. It's funny. So let me actually change the lights. But yeah, so um, today I had to work extra for um, to do some inspection work that I do. And basically what happened was I was stuck in traffic for two hours. They had this huge accident where I'm from, or actually where my work is at. So I basically got here at home about an hour ago or an hour and a half ago. And same with Nikki. So we ran through everything. I was like, I got to get to the stream. I got to get to you guys. So yeah, fun, right? Woohoo. Yeah. Please hit the like button again. I'm so sorry, everyone. Plus I had a cool intro running all the trains and the sound effects through the uh, speaker here, but yeah, we'll get, we'll, we'll do that again. <laughs> so if anyone missed it, um, but yeah, we were having some tech issues here. So we have some more people coming in. We have uh, Henry's before we had Southern Yankee as before. Um, yeah. Henry, like I said, says blame Heath. That's cool. Uh, Lehigh Valley model river. And how's it going? Uh, Justin's here. We also have Nikki checking in. Uh, I have a couple new mods that might stop by a little bit later. But yeah, thank you all for being here. I know it's uh, I'm going to change the lights in the back. That blinking is going to get really annoying. So, oh, man, let me change the. Uh, let's see, there's so many different lights on this app. Like there's like a million different light patterns and everything. And these are the uh, Philips Hue. Oh, that's bright. So I will turn that down. Once the uh, app allows me to cool her down. There we go. Hey, there we go. How's that, everyone? I think that's a lot better. All right. But yeah, if you guys um, are just coming in, welcome to the stream. Uh, some people I can see, some people I can't. Usually the people that are subscribed i can see that in the participants thing but some people stop stop in periodically and uh, just would like to welcome everyone if you're watching the replay again this is take two uh we had a huge tech issue basically i lost the entire stream which is so much fun uh yeah calming blue i think this is easier even though they say blue is more harsh on the eyes but i could actually fix the back that's a little too uh 
yeah, let's let's go back to the that kind of hurts too. Let's go back to the blue. I like that. That seems to be like the best out of this whole thing here. Uh, this seems to be the best. Nice and calming. But anyways, I got this awesome mic stand. I won't move it because you guys will hear it. It'll sound atrocious on there. I got this fancy new mic stand uh, via the Amazon. So I'm no longer going to kick the microphone stand. So you guys don't get that. Uh, you won't get that anymore. You get the nice boom mic stand here, all uh, organized and everything. And it's on like a spring system here. So it's just like the, uh, the Pixar lamp, which I have one on my desk. Um, I, I don't know if Ikea still sells those, but I, I heard there's like some issue that they had with the lamp and Pixar or something, but have a uh, springy lamp, just like this desk mic stand. All right. So if you guys saw from the thumbnail, I have a couple of goodies to open. Once we get a couple more people in here, I'll, uh, I'll get to that. And that's on the table. So I'd like to thank Nikki ahead of time. She opened up everything to prepare it for a live stream. So I don't have any like private information getting out there into the world and want to make sure there wasn't like a packing slip in there that showed my address or anything like that. And also she took the um, amazing time to cut all of the, um, you call them like pre-seals on each um, little container that the trains come in that I've seen before. I haven't seen these. But I've seen previous unboxings of Menard stuff and they have these plastic shells. And she uh, said that there was like a giant label on there, which I've seen before. And she cut all of those for us. All we have to do is pull them out of the box and show you guys what, what I got. I'm excited to see. I haven't seen them yet. And they've been sitting here for, um, I think they came in on Friday. Yeah. Blame me for that. It's my fault. Green is actually proven to be, <laughs> yeah 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 well green apparently green was like the original color of the devil or something like that i forgot i it's like an old english or old european literature so you know it's what they teach you in in school i guess but santa claus used to be green i remember that too it's supposed to like represent new life or something like that but yeah it's whoops see i Still push the mic stand. It's just better than kicking it. So, who? And it was blazing hot up here. I left the vent. So the vent's like right in this area here. The seal. This is the ceiling. So this is the uppermost part of the entire um, place here. So all the heat just creeps up the stairs. And when it gets warmer, I leave the attic door open so we can get some airflow up here. But the vent was closed, and I have the house fan on. So all that nice heat went up here and just stayed here um, because I had left the vent open. So there's no like air pushing fun stuff. Right. So, but like I said, I can't touch the keyboard. I refuse to, to touch it. Uh, worst comes to worst. I can pull up comments on my phone if I have to scroll through it and I have this fancy mount as well that came with the mic stand right over there. If you guys can see it, this uh, right here clips onto the desk. So I'm moving up in the world. A uh, little bit at a time. <laughs> like well, one Amazon purchase at a time. I will click on. Yeah, it's still not showing me all the participants. It says there's seven people here. Um, and then it goes down to like 10 or it goes up to 10 and it says like five. So it is what it is. So I will I will let this thing alone. Yeah, Nikki. Oh, hashtag blame. No, don't say that because if Heath comes in here, he's gonna be like, whoa. <laughs> always blame Heath. It's his, uh, it's his thing, you know? But actually I came up with something the other, um, the other day I went on an adventure with a couple other YouTubers, uh, Matt MPG or not MPG, Matt PG, and also Randy from Emerald sound. Uh, we went out to the union canal. That video will be up soon. Um, a lot of fun. I basically, they were making fun. It's like every time they go out, they find a dog. Well, every time I go out to somewhere, I'm always looking at or finding a train. So I thought that was kind of funny, which I did. I found trains at a park. Uh oh, yeah. Nikki said it's because, yeah. So now I get text messages here on the side. 
So if it gets real bad, I'll turn on airplane mode, but that's Nikki communicating back and forth from downstairs. He doesn't mind sharing. I mean, that's, that's his, uh, that's his stick. You know, that's what he does. Yes. Yes, I have. Uh, I actually have a video of it. Check it out. It's from, I want to say it was December because they did breakfast with Santa. And yes, during the pandemic, they still had breakfast with the Santa man. Uh, they ran, I forgot what, I forgot what their chessie is out there. The uh, beautiful painted chessie. They ran that with a CSX uh, GP unit. I don't know what unit it is, but yeah, I'm, I'm there all the time where I'm about about 45 minutes away or so, but that's, that's a great museum. It's, um, it's a little small, but it is, you know, it is a museum. Oh God. Daydreaming. Oh no. Yeah. When I was in school, I would just daydream about daydreaming, not about like trains and stuff. I would just pretty much think of like when, you know, <laughs> when is this class going to end? <laughs> actually move this yeah there we go i do want to raise the computer up because right now i'm like constantly looking down like this to see everything and i'd like to raise up the computer and then uh, make a rack for the interface so like right now i'm going through a microphone into an interface which converts the uh, microphone signal from analog because it's producing sound or it's basically absorbing sound, producing sound, and then going through the interface here. So I'd like to upgrade that in the future. Actually turn my brightness down on my computer a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I remember school. I don't want to remember it. It was, uh, it was rough. Yeah, yeah, Nikki's, we were there. It, it was fun. We had a good time. Uh, some things were still closed. They still ran trains and did breakfast with Santa, which was kind of funny. But um, I think, now that I think about it, most of their exhibits were still open. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, definitely head to, uh, it's bnorail.org, I believe. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, um, yeah, Jay and RJ were here. We were here all day, just hanging out, running trains. Uh, I, I made a small video. I, I really just enjoyed their company. I had a great time. I just recorded some like little clips there. And even Jay was, you know, he was um, asking, he's like, are you going to film? And I was like, you know, I just want to hang out with you guys and run trains, uh, you know, but they, they made a great movie. Um, well, Jay's made his video. Jay's video is up. It's amazing. Um, if any of you guys are new to um, their channels, check out. It's just JP videos. And then also RJ 78 productions. Uh, you guys will love their channels as well. They do a lot of train stuff and some other things too. Um, Jay's a variety channel and RJ does a little bit of everything too, but most of RJ stuff is like adventures and um, just attractions and things like that. Some things that I like to do as well. Uh, on the channel, like this spring and summer, I'll be out all the time filming and it's, it's going to be a great summer. I can't wait. School. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> yeah. School was like, uh, what now it's three years ago. I finished up, uh, college stuff. I'm finally done with that. That was a mess. And tonight I've got this fancy drink. It's called an Oreo Delight. I've had one of these before. Uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, it's like a Oreo cookie in a coffee drink. And it is delightful, I guess. <laughs> but I'll open this over here so you guys don't hear all the uh, the hissing. God, this thing's impossible. There we go. Yeah, usually I have like a nice cup. Ask, not tonight. I'm just drinking this stuff. So, cheers, guys. It's pretty good. Yeah, Nikki's schedule is all over the place right now. It's, um, you know, it's crazy. 
eighth grade holy crap yeah that was uh yeah it was fun times i guess some some you know fun for some not for not for all i guess <laughs> Whoops, there we go. I'm carefully touching the computer. I don't want to close the stream because that was that was a catastrophe. All right. 1986. Hey, that's a good year. That's when music was still really good. <laughs> So does anyone have any plans for the uh, spring or summertime? Like going out to, uh, you know, either rail fanning or just sightseeing or vacation plans? Because I know the weather is supposed to be really nice this week. Uh, I've got some plans this weekend. Um, I actually had my first show with my band in over a year uh, this Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to play again, be on stage and perform. I, I'd may not be able to live stream it. I was thinking about live streaming, but I don't think I can because the venue is taping it and then we're selling live stream tickets from there. So yeah, good year. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I wasn't around then, but I love uh, 80s music and stuff like that. Strasburg again. Yeah, I was, I was actually there. So um, here, actually move this around. Whoops. There we go. So I was actually at Strasburg on Sunday yesterday. Well, was it? Yes. Yeah. Yesterday I uh, stopped at Strasburg to do some filming and um, I, I got some new camera gear. I got a couple of DJI products. I got the Osmo action camera, which I can't wait to see the footage. You can actually review the footage on your phone through the app and also bought a new gimbal. So you guys will be nice and stabilized watching my, you know, watching the content. I won't be all over the place again. Uh, I had a really nice gimbal. I could not figure out the software behind it. And the software was like really sketch, excuse me, but it was called Zion. And I'm not, I'm not trashing the company. Apparently they make really, really nice gimbals for like professional camera rigs, like the big rigs you see on TV, you know, like on the news and stuff, they do steady cam work. Apparently they make great products for that. But for what I'm doing right now, it just was not working out. Um, the basically the DJI is just a much smaller version. It compacts into like this. And um, yeah, I gave the other gimbal to Nikki unless I need it for a spare or as a backup. But right now it's hers. She can have it, mess around with it. She can throw it off a cliff. <laughs> it won't matter. But she can mess with that for now. I'll see. Hey, and Strasbourg has changed a lot. It for the better, in my opinion, it's for the better. Uh, when I went many years ago, it, it basically had uh, very few amenities. It had like the photo stall. It had a food place, the waiting room, ticket booth combination. The cars have always been beautiful. Uh, basically, they kind of. I can't say like reimagined, but did a uh, a definite upgrade from what it was like food service wise. The uh, well, I'll say not the food service. Sometimes the food service is kind of slow, but the food quality has definitely gone up. The uh, food inside of the dining cars have gone up. All the first class cars have improved. You can actually have a, an adult beverage and ride the train. Until the train stops, once it leaves the station, there's a loophole. They can sell beverages on the train. Uh, what else is there? There's the shop tour, which they do one a day now because of COVID. It starts at noon, I believe, on the weekends. Yeah, Saturday, Sundays, it's like a noon shop tour. Um, I highly recommend to check that out. I wanted to go yesterday, but I missed it by like an hour. And it was online tickets only, and I totally forgot because of all the intimidating they had a giant tent there and they take your temperature and ask you know when your train was because they didn't want people like sticking around but they did allow me to film and i said look i'll wear a mask uh, i'll wear a face covering i'll stand the heck out of the way and they just said you can film you can be here we love to have you here filming just 
don't get near the cars and don't go in the cars because I didn't have a ticket. Totally understandable. They just had to, you know, keep all their ducks in a line, so to say. Henry, uh, free during the... Yeah, June's really booked up. Uh, it's going to be really crazy. The Pennsylvania Railroad Museum is still closed until further, further, further notice. Um, it's almost like a steam town situation because they have to go through the county regulation or state and then county regulation. Trust me, the county would probably say open up, but the state is probably, you know, really hunkered down. I, I want to get out to that museum too. It's been oh man, like two years. Yeah, it's been about two years since the museum. I'd love to film it. And I won't go by myself. I'll uh, contact some of my other YouTube um, YouTube family to go out there and check it out, to share it with them. Whew. Hot Rod Weekend at Ocean City. That's a crazy weekend. Uh, that, is, that is a lot of fun. If you like cars, like... I, I love cars. I just don't know anything about them. Like if that makes sense, like I can't pick out what model something is or the engine size or any of that, but I love the look of cars, like classic cars. I do know I have on the train garden is that I have a Corvette, like a very early Corvette. Uh, I think one of them is a caddy, pretty much all GM on the layout, but it's, um, yeah, I, I love classic cars. I just wish I knew more about it. I was never exposed to it um, growing up. I was exposed to like train stuff and hobby stuff and woodworking and wiring. But, you know, I love I love I, I love trains. Yeah. I also love classic cars. Yeah, November 2019. That's yeah, that was the last time that was. Uh, I believe my dad was with us and we did the whole museum together. And uh, there's a lot to do and lots to read in that museum. You can actually go into a diesel. Uh, they have, I forgot the name of the, of the diesel. It's an overhead electric engine. It looks like a, it looks like a GP unit, but it has overhead uh, catenary capabilities. It's strictly electric. It, it's an E something. I don't know if it's like, it sounds like E3 or something comes to mind, but those engines are there or not an engine, but that locomotive is there. Uh, they also have a Conrail, I believe it's a GP38 or GP40. You can get in and mess with the controls. They usually have a volunteer sitting there that he'll point out everything for you. He'll say like, this is the bell horn. Uh, the steam engine um, has a sadder fate. They actually took a piece of plexiglass over the controls and they have a, like a mid-sized steam engine. It's like a, I think it's like a, I don't know, like a 282 or something like that. And it's sitting there at, at the museum. It's Pennsylvania. It's a gorgeous engine, but it has a piece of plexiglass over the controls. So you can't mess with them. I, for what, what they told me was that kids were breaking stuff or parents weren't like directing their children to not like mess with the stuff on the engine. Some parts broke off and that stuff is expensive and it's really hard to find. So they put a piece of glass over for the act of uh, preservation. The last time I was there, I think they put, I think it's like a waist high piece of glass. So you can still look around it and see all the controls. But there was one time I was there, they literally had it right up against the, uh, like all your sight glasses and everything or gauges in the steam engine. It was kind of sad, but. Uh, the BNO has a couple open engines you can go in and mess with stuff, but there are a lot of there are a lot of parts missing, which is probably because of the same reason as the Pennsylvania stuff. Oh, if you go, you'll post when you're going to Strasbourg. Yeah, um, I don't know what's going on? I have a bunch of stuff planned for the spring, uh, railroad wise and adventure wise. It's, I'm doing a little bit of mix of everything on the channel. Uh, not so much variety, just traveling places and checking out like ruins and stuff like that or transportation or railroad related finds. But yeah, definitely let me know. I might be able to catch up or something like that. Love cars. My favorite might have to be the 
Chevy El Camino. I've always wanted one of those. <laughs> Pensy Railroad is the coolest. Love the classic steamers. Yeah, I think they have a K4 just sitting out in the rain and rusting away. Uh, I don't know if I got a picture of it. I can check check the smart device over here. I'll show you guys the, the awesome yard. Uh, they have tons of stuff there. It's, it's insane. There was talk um, years ago that they wanted to build a roundhouse because, whoa, that was the Bluetooth speaker cut now. It scared the crap out of me. <laughs> um, there was talk every time we went there to the museum, they always talked about the like their legacy program. They wanted to like build a roundhouse with the Reading Lines turntable that's already in the ground. They wanted to build a roundhouse around it to preserve steam engines and stuff, but they never did it. Okay, that is a K4. Okay, cool. Yeah, I love K4. I actually, tonight I got the K4 sitting on the main line, and then on the inner track I have the NW2. And what's up top? What do we got? It's a prairie, prairie engine up top. Hey, how's it going, Gus? Yeah, they got that old Amtrak. I forgot what that engine, or it's not an engine. Again, it's electric locomotive. Uh, those are classic. Um, there's actually, you can see one working in a movie. It's uh, Trading Places with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. The engine pulling their train is actually one of those Amtrak engines you're talking about. They also have a newer Amtrak. It's uh, They nicknamed it like the toaster. Um, the thing is, there's actually the Mark line, MRC, or M-A-R-C, which is Maryland Area Rail Commuter. It's their commuter between... Uh, pretty much the Baltimore area all the way up to uh, Aberdeen from Aberdeen to DC. That's their rail commute service. And it shares the old Pensy line, which runs Amtrak now. So they still run toasters. I forgot the name of the toaster. I'll look it up. Whoops. See, again, I hit the mic. I'm gonna look up some stuff for you guys. I don't think I have the picture on here because I use the new action cam to do a lot of the footage. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, unfortunately, I do not have the uh, pictures of their K4. Henry, pretty much all of June is is booked up uh, just because of just a lot of things. But it's, it's going to be nuts. I can't wait. I want to get out there this summer <laughs> and do the stuff I couldn't do last summer. Um, the greatest thing too, um, this is a great example. So yesterday I went to Strasburg. All it did was cost, you know, fuel and like breakfast. Uh, you charge up your batteries at home, you charge up your camera gear and you go out and film. It's free compared to if you want to ride the train or anything like that, you know, it costs some money, but um, it is what it is. But I, I love just going out and filming somewhere and it's, you can, sit there all day and watch a train it doesn't cost you a dime other than fuel and some food. I mean, it's like filming for free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm start punching the mic. Yeah. I love this thing. It's on a really nice stand. I mean, these stands are cheap too. It, it's not like, um, it's not like a million dollar stand. It was like, I think it was under $20 and it came with the, didn't come with a mic cable. This is a really nice mic cable, but it came with all these uh, wire ties or the we call them Velcro wire ties that I use all the time. But it gave me a couple of them. It gave me like five, which is pretty cool. And then it came with the phone mount off the side. That's uh, like a kickstand. And it came with the shock mount too and another mic clip. So I can't beat it. I mean, that's amazing. And this looks a lot better too. So yeah. But yeah, this summer I have a couple railroads I want to get out to. I got the, um, was it the Stewartstown Railroad? It's on this weekend. I believe Saturday and Sunday they're running trains. I'm going to try to get down there early Saturday because I have a lot going on with the show and everything. Um, Six Eleven was there. 
So I'm reading. So Lehigh Valley said uh, no Strasburg runs number 90 and 89. Um, okay. So yesterday they only ran 475, which is great. I I love the whistle on there. It's got a. I remember 475 when they had, I believe at one time it had an NW, they call it the Hooter whistle. It's just like a kind of like a groan or like a, I don't know, it's like a grunt sounding whistle. It's not very pretty, but as of recent, um, oh, someone commented on the other stream is like, what is this? So I think that's funny, but yeah, I think they changed out the whistle. I could be wrong, but it used to have an NW Hooter kind of like the um, 1309 now has at the Western Maryland scenic railroad, but the new whistle on 475 is great. If it is the new whistle, if I'm wrong, sounds great. Uh, whatever whistle that is, it sounds awesome, but they ran, I think four trains in total yesterday. And then what was it? They ran the dinner train on it. Um, basically it was like the, um, the dining train, the first class car, they even ran their combo car, which I haven't seen in a very long time. Uh, I mentioned that in the video too. They had the BNO car on there, the Western Maryland car. They didn't run all the Strasburg cars, like the let's say Hobbler's Knob or whatever, and some of the other stops along the way. But they did run some really cool cars, so I was very happy to see that. Like I haven't seen that combo car run in in eons. Like it's been years. Uh, and then they also were storing the cars on not the other track as much, but they were taking them where the uh, engine yard is, where it comes all the way up to the, like the restroom area. They had cars stored there too. And I actually walked all the way back there politely and respectfully to try to get some footage. Um, I got a ton of footage of that day, even though yesterday I was only there for like three hours. I caught uh, 475 leaving, coming back. And then I drove out to the Caboose, uh, Caboose Motel, Red Caboose Motel, I believe it's called. Uh, drove out there, got some great footage. I actually sat the action cam on the tracks or not on the tracks, but like on the ballast, the ballast line there. Got some great footage of that. So, yeah, I can't wait to check it out. It's still, it's still on the action cam. And here's the new action cam. So you guys can see it's the uh, Osmo action, which uh, some of my friends that, well, if you guys haven't seen it, so um, RJ and JP recommended using these. So yeah, I picked it up. I thought I saw a scratch on there. I was like, no, it's brand new. It's my uh, brand new gift to myself. <laughs> Try not to touch a whole lot on the computer because anyone coming in new or watching the replays, we had a catastrophic, uh, <laughs> a catastrophic error. I lost the stream. So yeah. Woohoo to uh, technology. All right. So I can grab the new box of stuff. I'm sure you guys want to see that. Um, let's see. We have, it says 12 people right now. It's awesome. Welcome everyone. And if you're new, um, this is a scheduled stream every Monday at 8 PM, give or take a few minutes and technical difficulties, but welcome all. So I'm going to grab the box of goodies. I'll turn the lights on a little bit more so you guys can see the uh, cars. Uh, just to reiterate, I have not seen these cars other than what the app said. Rail King items. No, I that are all different. So Menard, uh, Menards basically is a home improvement warehouse. I don't live near Menards. Menards is like five hours in that direction there, <laughs> all the way out somewhere in West Virginia. Uh, Nikki and I would like to make a day trip or be a really a weekend trip out there to visit. Hey, Jamie, how's it going? I'll be listening, watching 
that's totally fine. We're glad to have you here. Oh, just mess with me. <laughs> no, just Menard stuff. But yeah, Menards is a cool, um, it's a very cool idea. It reminds me of like the old days. So when my parents were growing up, they used to say, you know, Sears, if you guys aren't familiar with Sears anymore, um, Sears was a giant department store that competed with Montgomery Wards and a bunch of other department stores, but each one had trains at one point or another. Um, I, I actually bought a Lionel set from Sears uh, years ago. And it was in a box. It was a Pennsylvania Flyer 080. Uh, I featured that on this channel a while back. But um, according to some of my other fans and viewers, and also friends, uh, especially Don's Trains, he actually opened up a set of trains from Montgomery Wards, which is really cool. It was a Marx set. M-A-R-X. That stuff's really old. It's really cool. It's from like the, let's say it was from like the, the 60s or so. Uh, really cool looking trains and everything. It had like a smoke unit and Mark's toys was the biggest. Um, basically. Yeah. Sears and Roebuck. Yeah. And they still had some products that would say like uh, Sears Roebuck on them, like the shoe line and stuff like that still said like Sears Roebuck right before they closed. So I thought that was cool. Uh, Sears also had like the whole Die Hard line and Kenmore like Sears Kenmore was like a big thing. Uh, apparently Kenmore was owned by, I don't know if like it was a Maytag thing, but all of them owned each other. Uh, I was like Whirlpool, Maytag, Kenmore, and um, I forgot the other brand, but they're, they're like, it was all these appliance brands. So yeah, Sears was huge. So Menards is kind of bringing back that tradition of, hey, we're a hardware store. We sell everything and everything for a house. You could probably build a house from shopping at Menards and they sell trains. So I thought that was super cool. They sell their own brand of cars and accessories, buildings, anything you name it. And Menards probably makes it other than some engines and um, whoops. See, I hit the mic. See, Southern was right. I am going to hit this thing. I got to, here we go. I'll move it away. So I can't hit it anymore. Yeah, I miss I miss the old hot coffee, but it is hot up here. So this is this is the uh, delight. Watch this be like the video thumbnail. Like you click over the video. This is going to be me showing coffee, talking about trains. It's going to say like delight. There we go. Thanks to YouTube. Like YouTube picks out the weirdest things for like the the clip. It'll be like probably me doing like one of these or something like that. They're probably listening to me right now. So, yeah. All right, so I'm going to grab the box. We have 13 people. Awesome. Thank you so much. So I'm going to grab the box. We're going to get started with the uh, unboxing. Let's see. Uh, I missed a bunch of comments. Hey, look, here's Don's Trains. I was just talking about you in a good way. I was talking about your uh, Montgomery Ward set. That was awesome. Guys, check out Don's Trains. Um O scale collector. I'm sorry. Last week I had a brain fart. I was like, what scale do you run? And I'm like, I talk to Don all the time. Um, he's way down. Well, technically you're in the West area. So, um, but yeah, definitely check out his channel. Great collection of toy trains, classic trains too. Uh, just like me, but I have newer and older stuff. I love the older stuff too. So yeah, definitely really cool. St. Louis. Yeah. The gateway to the West. And it's actually, uh, it's really cool. So the BNO Railroad, actually, their main goal of the entire railroad campaign was to get to St. Louis, which I thought was so cool, uh, except for their uh, pretty much just, you know, the whole like BNO, CNO thing. Oh, now we're having connection issues, of course. Connection is unstable. Oh, and we're back. Sorry, guys. We had a connection issue. So, but yeah, the BNO, that was their main goal. They wanted to get to the West. Everyone else, like the Pensy, New York Central, North, South uh, type railroads, the furthest the Pensy ever went, I believe was Washington, D.C. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it was the heart of D.C. into um, 
I guess it would be, I don't know if it's Penn Station or Union Station. I believe it's Union Station. Yeah, yeah, Southern, you'll love you'll love the channel. I mean, he opens up all kinds of stuff. Um, so yeah, so guys, here we go. And Funkmaster, how's it going? We're about to unbox some trains. So yeah, we have 14 people now, 10 likes. Thank you all so much. I'm going to grab the box on the table. I'm going to turn the lights up. So uh, shield your eyes. I'm, I'm apologizing ahead of time, so I don't screw this up. But we are going to unbox some awesome trains here. And I have not seen them. Nikki has unboxed. Nikki prepared the stream for me. So thank you so much wherever you are in the humble abode. Um, but thank you for helping me out. I turn the lights on a little bit, just a little bit. So I don't blind anybody. All right. We turn. All right. That's not that bad, but the color is real weird. Oh God, that's bad. Keep it. I'm going to keep it there. Is that cool? Is that cool with everyone? Also grab some water. So hopefully this brightness isn't killing anyone's eyes. Um, it's like a 25%. I'm going to leave it there. So I'll be right back. I'm going to roll over here. All right. All right, guys. So, yes, it is opened. Uh, oh, didn't sound good. Here's the outside. So you get this cool Menards box right here. So we're going to go one piece at a time. <laughs> it looked green there for a minute. Probably, yeah. I mean, that's just my, uh, that's my medicine kicking in, right? No, I'm just reading the chat there. It slowed up for a second. That's weird. YouTube, you're you're failing me, man. Help me out here. <laughs> all right, so let's go. Uh, all right, so anyone who missed it earlier, yeah, save big money. So I will go over the really quick. In total, the order was like, I think it was like $82. That includes express shipping. I didn't rush ship it. It automatically did it for me. Uh, and there's also tax. So I paid whatever, I think it's like 6% for Pennsylvania sales tax. So they taxed me on them. $12 shipping. 17, whatever a car, it works out to be 20 some dollars and some change for each car. Uh, if you go on Lionel's website right now, some of these cars would go for 80 to $100 a piece. Yes, that that's insane. I never spend that much for cars. I promise. Even though I have a crap ton of trains up here. I've never ever I've bought one car for 80 bucks. It could sing and dance. It could run itself. I would never spend a hundred dollars for just a car unless someone gave it to me. I don't, I've never done that. So, uh, knock on wood. One of these days, if I win the lottery, there you go. I might buy a hundred dollar car, but until now I will be the, uh, affordable, uh, train guy over here. My Menards coal car came in today. Hey, that's awesome. And a yellow mailing envelope. Now I got the box. It says fragile. If you guys know what that's from, you know, Oh, I know what some pre-war goes for. <laughs> I got my pre-war shelf on this side. Um, I'm going to do a video. So I will catch up on the uh, yeah, major. This is my major award. Woohoo. But yeah, I will catch up on um, the Knicks reviews. I haven't done one for a while. I've just been so busy. Um, the last two Knicks reviews I did, I actually purchased the engine and then did a review. The next couple will be things I already have. It may not be as exciting or as old, but it'd still be a Knicks review. So you guys have to watch it. All right, first, first is first, if that makes sense. All right. Unfortunately, they package them in a clear plastic plastic shell. So we have a merchandise. Where's that glare coming from? I think it's coming from my town lights. 
we have a Pensy merchandise car. And so far, so good. I mean, these look great. Nikki did this for me. Like I said, thank you so much. Because if not, you guys would be hearing the knife going down. Uh, did she crack open the shells yet? Uh, no. So this might be kind of loud, so I'm sorry. That's not as bad as I thought. Jeez. All right. So here is car number uno. I'll actually turn on the light on the ring light here. Check out that beauty. I mean, oh man, that's really cool. I'm actually looking at the bottom of it. So it looks like you get an air tank. So there we go. We get like a little air tank under there. Uh, the wheels appear to be, these are like cast trucks. So that's actually very surprising. Look, listen to this. They roll just like by like doing this. I'm like, man, they're going to roll really nice. Check out, check out this. And they just want to go and go and go. So I bet you if I put this on the track, I could probably push it from one end to the other <laughs> really smooth. And it actually looks like it has, so yeah, these do decouple. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have two more cars to go. So this is just a box car. This is the boring one. On my way. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> so yeah, these have the nice uncoupler system underneath. This doesn't have that annoying tab. Like the Lionel NPC stuff, all those tabs break off. Um, you just have a nice uh, decoupler right here, which is that tab up here. I guess, yeah, all you do is this. There you go. You're decoupled, which is great. I just installed the uh, magnetic decoupler on the other track. Uh, so far, I'm really impressed with this. There's a lot of weight to this. Um, yeah, the whole bottom. Yeah, the whole bottom of this, the whole bottom plate is all metal. These are also metal. And the air tank is plastic. So I have really like this so far. Um, geez, they actually added a bill of lading on the door. That's insane. Like this little tab here or this piece of paper here, it says bill of lading, uh, one, two, zero, one, eight, seven. And one thing with Menards too, they guarantee that each box car, I did read this on the website. Each car has its own ID number. You can kind of see it's taped over like right there. Um, but they do guarantee that each car has its own ID number. So if you are running something more model esque, you won't have each car saying 13006. So it might be like 13007, whatever. Um, it might be done in succession. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, what other? We get the capacity limit on here, um, the uh, load limit, and then the uh, tear weight of the car. So yeah, these are. So far, I'm very impressed. This is, uh, this reminds me of like the, uh, the nicer style NPC stuff with uh, the sprung trucks, but these are solid die cast trucks, which are cool. Uh, I do like that. And these roll pretty nicely. So yeah, we'll get this on the track. And, whoops. Hey, let's see how nice it rolls. So far, I'm like really impressed with this. Yeah, standard O. Yeah, it's pretty much like the toy toy line stuff, which is awesome. I love toy trains. So the car is on your wish list. You got to get it before they they sell out because um, Menards will not like. So I went on there last year looking at stuff. Um, Eric's trains did a review of some Menards stuff. Some of his stuff was kind of janky, but he got the uh, caboose that had the blinking lights or something like that. Once I went on Menard's website, there weren't any cabooses for sale or cabise, if you want to say that. So um, if you see it, you got to get it before it's gone because it might be like a limited uh, limited style run. So let's I'll turn you guys around. We'll see how well this rolls. If the camera allows me to. <laughs> Whoops. There you are. Cool. All right. 
It's actually not too bad at all. I mean, it's got some mass to it. I mean, it definitely needs some power. Menards claims they never reissue an item. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I'm thinking. Like, once this car's done, it's done. Uh, it's actually why I got one of the other cars in here. This is actually the most simple car out of the three, from at least what I could see online and everything else. So this one has got a little bit of rock into it. I like that. And it just wants to roll. So yeah, this is great. I'll actually, um, here, I'll move the Pennsylvania caboose. So this is an MTH uh, rugged rails caboose. One of my favorites in the collection. This has sprung trucks, real fancy. And The coupler height's correct and everything. It doesn't look, you know, too bad. I'm really impressed with that. I mean, this thing just wants to roll and it's got mass to it. So we're going to hook that up to the other Rugged Rail series, which is next to it with those uh, crates. Actually, I got another, I think I have another Pensy car. So I'll leave a space, I'll leave a space in there. So, so far I'm impressed. I mean, I was not expecting the quality for the price, um, usually for like a twenty dollar car, you get a twenty dollar car, unless it's used at like an antique shop. Oh, let me fix the camera here. All right, there we go. Yeah, I, I buy twenty dollar cars all the time, but they're not new. They're like MPC, uh, Vision Vision Line stuff. Um, God. Yeah, I don't know where Gemma's at. She's downstairs somewhere. Um, Lionel can't even get coupler height. Yeah, my whole set of um, heavyweight passenger cars, which are in the box down there, um, they're like in a tote. I have so many passenger cars are just safely placed in a tote with bubble wrap around them. But the coupler heights are all incorrect for that set. Um, and not like, I'm not saying scale correctness. I'm talking like you go to hook up the set and the couplers are like this. And then when you go around a turn or some type of little bump in the track, they decouple. And it's like a, that was an expensive set of cars. It came with a GG one, the GG one set I have, I think it was like 500 bucks for the engine or the locomotive and the three cars. So if you say, okay, what the cars are 250 bucks, let's just say that with, it was a whole set and it was a, it was pretty much a, like a high school graduation, welcome to college life type set. But the thing was, the cars are beautiful. They, they're they semi-scale, you know, they're 027. And uh, the coupler heights don't match up anymore. And I don't know what's up with it. And they also have the issue of the decoupler system hitting the center rail. So that shorts out when you want to use the decoupler. So not, not the greatest thinking on Lionel's part. So... All right, let's get to train or train car number two. Uh, I take a swig of this. All right. Yeah, yeah, the cat, cats are, our cat's weird. She doesn't eat like normal cat stuff. And um, I got her to take her nails trimmed like two weeks ago. And then the people at the pet shop were like, hey, your cat's going to love these snacks. And I'm like, okay, cool. It was kind of expensive. It's like a boutique. It's a family owned business. That's great. We love them so much. They're, they treat the cat. They treat Gemma, the cat very, very nicely. And they're the sweetest people ever, but the cat did not like the treats at all. And they swore by them. They're like, man, your cat's going to love them and all this. So yeah. Yeah. Normal cat. Yeah. I love, I love our cat Gemma. She's great. She's actually my first, um, my first independently owned pet usually I had like a dog with the family, but Gemma's my first cat as well. Uh, growing up. So, uh, well not growing up, but she's my first cat. There you go. Uh, I'm severely allergic to cats, but Gemma is like hypo -allerg allergenic for some reason. So it works out. Southern says I'm not normal either. Yeah, I'm not normal either. Let me look at this hair. My bum, right? <laughs> oh, cats with her. Good. 
Yeah, I can see Gemma did some damage up here. I left the attic door open and she uh what she do? Yeah, like one of my signs are broken out there. Or not broken, but the it's pushed out. Some of my cars are moved and all that stuff. All right, so let's move on to car number two. All right, so I'm changing it up. We're doing a different road name. Pop this open. There we go. All right. This looks really weird with the lights, but um, I'm digging it already. So we have a CSX tanker car. Um, not the biggest fan of CSX. I love Chessy though, but even though it kind of is Chessy, well, I believe the S in CSX does not stand for Chessy System Express. I think it stands for Seaboard. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I love this. This is cool. It's a, it's a single gnome tank. This is actually my first modern uh, looking freight car. All of my other cars are like 50 style, like the Golf. Um, I'll show you guys in a second. I won't put this down quite yet. I love this. This is really light compared to the other one, but she is a modern tank. So, oh man, look at the back. They even do all like the cap details and they have a placard. What's it hauling? All right. So our hazmat plate on here says 1993. So for all my diesel, my diesel lovers, this is hauling uh, off-road diesel, which is the 1993. Yep. And yeah, it's tiny. Got the little hazmat diamond there. Uh, yeah, I'd love this so far. I mean, it is quite light, um, but the trucks are heavy on this. So it will stay, you know, stay on the track. Uh, these, these are really nicely, uh, fastened in here. It looks like a rivet through the bottom, like a punch rivet. And then it's also stuck to the frame. So it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, I like the detail at the bottom too. They also kept the, uh, Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> so I read the hazmat plate and then here where my middle finger is, it says, or two fingers, it says, um, diesel fuel only company use. So this is for diesel locomotives. So that's really cool. Yeah. Our cat. Yeah. <clears throat> so I can see on here, they also changed the X has no meaning. That's what I've heard. They said the lawyers, um, when they became a company, um, I read that. It's really funny. So everyone would think like I, I, for the longest time, I call it express or expedited, but, um, so according to what I read when they merged Chessy seaboard and all the millions of railways incorporated in the CSX, usually it's just Chessy seaboard Atlantic coast or, um, Florida, Florida, East coast, Atlantic coastline, I can't even think of the other one. C well, C and O as Chessie. Yeah, it's just it basically is just the X, just they thought it sounded cool. And that's literally what the the, <laughs> the Wikipedia article, and it sounds really bad. The Wikipedia literally says the uh shareholders and lawyers thought it sounded cool just saying X. So call it as you will, express, expedited, extreme extremely blue i don't i don't know what to say but anyways i love this car um single dome which means it only has one dome up top got a really nice uh blue and yellow it's very eye-catching when you look at this um it's really cool so let's see how this rolls on the track whoops i can actually push <laughs> like ex extreme. <laughs> yeah, railroad. I know one thing, it doesn't stand for Nick's Crossing. I know that. Like Chessy, Chessy Nick's Crossing Railroad. All right. So I'm going to tilt you guys down. Let's see this. Oh, there we are on the screen right there. Yeah, that rolls very, very well. Uh, this car is a lot lighter, like I said, but. It seems to like sticking to the track, which is great. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, we'll get this on the other track. I have a Chesapeake and Ohio NW2. 
which is over in the tunnel. So I'll hook that up to it. The, uh, what's it? The E unit is now stuck. There she goes. There she is. All right. Watch X Men growing up. Yeah, I, I um didn't have a lot of comic books and stuff, but I recently got into some of the stuff. So it's pretty cool. Like one of my friends is like, he wants to force me to watch um, Avengers and all that. It's like, man, I'm so busy. It's like I don't have time to sit there and watch like a four hour movie, but I, I do love long movies and stuff like that. All right, so let's get this hooked up. Let's see. Actually push the uh, other cars back. All right, um, here we go. Ah, that's gonna be kind of a tight fit, so we're gonna have to. There we go. She is one of my smoothest running post-war engines. It just can be uh, kind of hard to tell what direction it's going. Oh, come on. Here we go. Yeah, that rolls really nice. So let's get these coupled up. Yeah, these coupler heights are really nice, too. I'm very impressed. Actually, staying up in... Uh, that okay so you guys will see this train going around so i have uh the nw2 chesapeake and ohio switcher engine there and cno boxcar which you guys can see the end of i love those graphics on there like the uh 1940s 50s graphics from cno i'm all all over it all about it uh after that, i got some other chessy system uh are they chessy system yes they're bno chessy system uh, or hoppers. I love those too. And at the end, I have a CNO and Chessy system caboose, which you guys have seen uh, for one of my next reviews. So we'll get to that a little bit later once we start running the trains. And the last but not least, um, here we go. Camera is always messed up. There we go. Cool. All right. Yeah, wow. Yeah, this this is one of those special cars. I don't know if they're going to make this uh, forever, but uh, Nikki said... Uh-oh. Let's see. There is an issue with the internet, apparently. Let me look what she said. So Comcast is apologizing for the internet uh being all messed up so whatever thank you comcast for uh yeah so maybe it wasn't the computer that ended the stream but we can all blame comcast right so here is the last car in the box um and the thing is too i this sounds kind of mean if um if you guys are in a box collecting uh you most people will not hold on to these plastic boxes. I know I won't. I just, it's a plastic shell. It's not very appealing. Uh, there's very few trains that actually have the boxes for still. And some people that's a, that's a total like no, no. Like I have a ton of boxes from all of my, um, what do you call it? The limited edition stuff. I keep the boxes for, but other than that, I really don't have a lot of boxes. So, um, like I said, some people like would that would make them pull their hair out. I just, if it's really old, like post war, pre war, I will keep the boxes. But if it's anything modern, like Chinese line, I usually don't keep the box. But this, it's great because you don't have to keep this. You can throw this away, save the space. This isn't very, a very appealing piece of packaging here. So let's get into it. So we have, oh man, this is awesome. <laughs> Just threw that away there. Uh oh. All right.
yeah, Nikki just uh, gave you guys the heads up for that. But this is a limited boxer. I can, or not boxer. This is a hopper. I'm losing it. Um, I can already tell that this is going to be a limited, a very limited piece. So if you guys are into Norfolk Southern or Pennsylvania or both, definitely get this car before it is gone. Uh, this one was more expensive than the tanker and the box car. This one, I believe was $19.99. So $2 for $2 more, you get this amazing hopper. And this, um, <laughs> this is awesome. I, I've never purchased a hopper before or a covered, it's a covered hopper. Um, I have a couple from a collection that was given to me. I have a, uh, it's Canadian Pacific. It's it's beautiful. It's got the uh, gray and brown. I'm not a huge fan of brown cars, but the Canadian stuff is pretty cool. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. So what? Um. So what Southern Yankee just said. He said that these would be painted yellow. Um. I just, I just realized that let me find that really quick. Cause that's a great observation. What was in the box? Yo, uh, this, <laughs> yeah. RJ is our, um, he's our official mod other than Nikki. So everyone welcome RJ, RJ 78 productions. I'm sure I'll have more mods. I just need to ask uh, some more people, but yeah, welcome to the stream. But yeah, this is just one of three items in the box. And uh, <laughs> yeah, RJ approves. Yeah, it's sorry. It's not Conrail. So yeah, uh, RJ likes, uh, he likes train stuff too. We've, well, he's been over the, the house before uh, featured in the other videos. But yeah, this is Norfolk Southern, uh, not Conrail, but uh, I eventually will get some Conrail stuff up in here. So I'd love to get Conrail stuff. Um, I just, they had a, I think it was a GP, I want to say GP 38 at Strasburg train shop, but they wanted $600 for it. Hey, Revenge of the Apocalypse. How's it going? Yeah, I know you guys were on an adventure and thank you for the, thank you for the sub. I just got the notification. Be back in 15. All right, man. Y'all yeah, see you then. <laughs> yeah, Strasburg train shop. I walked some of their stuff was very expensive. Like I'm talking like way expensive. Um, I was even talking to uh I don't want to give out his name, but there happened to be a brakeman for that works for Strasburg at the Strasburg train shop, but he works for the Strasburg Railroad. I'd end up talking to him and he loves like post-war trains and stuff like that. I mean, so check out the channel, but we'll see where that goes. But yeah. Um, it's great talking to an actual employee of an active railroad. But yeah, these these do open. Oh, you guys are oh, you guys are still on the road trip. Me and Orger are together going to phone. <laughs> Am I Conrail? <laughs> Conrail pajamas. Yeah, all blue and everything. Better not get them dirty. You'll be able to see everything, you know. Get like a grease stain or a cigarette burn. That would be pretty bad. Oh, what did you say? The hopper? Yeah, I got to look that up. Because, okay, so everyone that's coming in, uh, Southern pointed out that these hopper hoods should be yellow, according to the Menards picture. I didn't even notice that. I just was mesmerized by all the cool detail on the, the decal here. There is a little bit of a mess up. They actually, so these are nice and straight, like the uh, pinstriping. Well, this one's a little curved, but this one on this side is way curved. If you guys can see that, but hell, I don't care. I mean, I don't really care. <laughs> the car looks great. It's going to be zooming down the track. Um, but yeah, let me check out that. Let me check out the shipping details of that. There's a train called the GG one that runs. I mean, might. 
<laughs> yeah, these are GG1 style striping. Uh, I believe the Pennsylvania had them on like the E7 that's at the Pensy, uh, the, what's at the Pensy Railroad Museum has an E7, which is huge. It's like a million miles long. So, yeah. Yeah, 24 bucks. Like I said, I don't care about the defects. It's cool. The only thing I don't like, Menards has the graffiti cars. Um, if you buy like all the graffiti cars and they're all the same, it's kind of like defeats the purpose. I guess you would buy one of each graffiti car. I don't, I don't know, but I don't like having graffiti on my cars. I like having everything pretty clean. Uh, the weather cars. Yeah. I might, I might bite on that, but you know, I, I just like running the stuff and I don't really care if it's, uh, got graffiti on it or weathering. I'll let the weathering happen over time. Like my uh, camp box car up there, uh, has actual dirt on it. Uh, I've got it at a train show with, it's got real life weathering. It's like real dirt, mold, and all kinds of nasty stuff. I left it on there. It's a camp box car. Hey, Wicked, how's it going? We're, we're doing some investigative work here. I'm looking up my uh, order from Menards. All right. Let's see. Man, this app is taking forever. Yeah, okay. So... indoor weathering yeah exactly you know a little basement uh little basement funk <laughs> like your pen central cars look like they just rolled out of the shop <laughs> do your pen central cars also fall over on their on themselves and tip over and stuff um yeah here's like here's nothing on here so yeah the the hoppers should have painted yellow uh doors on them and this one was 18 bucks so i can't complain about that either so yeah all these should be painted yellow whatever i love this car it's gonna be rolling around soon super tree kit yeah yeah wicked i saw your comment earlier uh, did you get a chance to like put that together or anything and is that is that woodland scenic I forgot who makes that, but yeah, there's are um I have seen those kits around. It's been a while since I've seen one, but yeah. They need a government bailout. They need a government crane, you know, to pick up their their cars. You know, I did watch that video, it's hilarious. Like one of them in the beginning, it was like the first 30 seconds, there you see this car do like this, then it rolls back onto itself and then does one of these. And I was like, You gotta be kidding me, you know. So yeah, we're gonna get this on the track. Oh yeah, this one, I did, I, I just noticed this. This one doesn't roll as like freely around. It kind of gets caught up on the uh, little ornamental steps or ladder pieces right here. It's it's stuck in there. It's kind of hard to see. There it is. It gets stuck on those. So I'll just run this on the outer loop, the uh, 042. Same as before, it has like the really nice uh, coupler releases. They don't, you know, break off or anything like that. And these are also all die cast trucks. So yeah, that's, that's an awesome value. And um, what else? Something I just saw. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look at that the brake cylinder or the brake brake cylinder is tucked in there. So that's pretty cool too. Scenic Express, yeah, most are made super nice. Yeah, I'll have to check those out. I've got tons of trees and things to do up here. Uh, I've got a whole whole grab bag of scenery down here, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, movie magic, yeah. It's, it's uh, you know, it's... Wait, what did you say? No. Yeah, no thumbtack couplers. Yeah, I hate those things. And I've got... um. So it's funny. So I got this collection from a train show. It's a whole set of Pensy uh, NPC era. And if you guys are from, aren't familiar with NPC, it's basically uh, I think it's considered like 1969 to like 1989 or something like that. That whole span. It's roughly in there. Um, I got a set of NPC cars. They're all Pennsylvania's. And someone took a rubber band around each coupler. <laughs> 
because they would open up on their own because the little tabs broke off because they ran it so much. So I got it home and I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? I just left the rubber bands on. <laughs> All right. Put that uh, modern covered hopper being pulled by a steam engine. Yeah, all the coupler heights are great. Um, looks like, yeah, everything's cool. Lines up real nice. Running low on the coffee, the fake coffee. This is a whatever delight. It's pretty cool. It's like drinking an Oreo, I guess. <laughs> Um, uh, let's see. Almost level eyeballing. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it does work. Yeah, it's this. These are great. Um, but yeah, I have a whole set, and I, I have some other like some other engines up on the shelf that were given to me. That um, it's a seaboard. I'll show you guys. It's on the uh, la shelf here. It's the uh. Seaboard, not next. Well, it's next to the Western Maryland. The uh, other high nose that's up there. Um, here, I'll I'll grab it and show you guys. It's really funny. So it does one of these. You can actually. Um, here, I'll show you guys. So this was a surprise. Uh, it came in the box, and then I lifted it up out of the box, and then this happened so it's missing the pins but i love the graphics on here and it runs it runs you just have to remember to not lift it up by the shell just carry it over like this um but yeah this is all this is mpc lionel but what was what was the cool thing about this they used all metal gears that's the difference with this one so all the gears in there are all metal so it's going to last even longer so i put this back up on the shelf All right, so let's get to running these beautiful cars. Um, I'm excited to see them go around. I, like I said, I haven't opened these yet. Um, thank you so much to Nikki for preparing all these boxes. These cars look great, so it's gonna be um, it's gonna be awesome. So track one for tonight. Let's see, get you guys spun around here. Don't want to get caught up on the uh, webcam cable, but all right. So on track one. I've got the uh, MTH K4 uh, Proto Sound one, so it's got like the uh, rail sounds and the trackside. I think they call them station sound or yard sounds. There you go, yard sound. Jeez, uh, it's been it's got a bunch of Pensy cars with it, all kinds of uh, mixed Lionel MTH and Menards cars. And then on track two, on the inside, I got the uh, NW2 switcher. Hooked up to some CNO with the new CSX tender or tanker, not tender. I always mess that up. And up top is the same train from last week. It's the uh, Prairie hauling some uh, post-war Prairie engine up there. And um, what else we got? We got the NYC hopper or gondola car. Got a Lionel Lines tanker. We have another golf tanker and we have a union pacific extended vision line caboose which looks kind of funny because that's almost to scale but um yeah it just looks kind of silly it is what it is i mean this this is trains nothing really has to make sense that's why i do this uh hobby it's all for fun so let's get running these trains let me uh turn the uh web light off there Oh, stuck on a uh, stuck on the cords. All right, that's a good angle right there. You guys will be able to see everything. Yeah, exactly. All for fun. Yeah, big kids, right? <laughs> all right, so all aboard. Let's get this uh, Proto Sound one moving here.
Hey, good night, Southern. Thank you so much for stopping by. Engine needs more smoke. All right, so yeah, I like to smoke up the attic with the uh, trains on Monday nights for anyone new or watching the replays. So let's get some uh, smoke flowing up in here. There we go. That's more like it. Secondhand train smoke right here. Oh, I think I just decoupled my train. Yeah, I just decoupled the train. <laughs> So yeah, with PS1, uh, with PS1 trains, you can actually decouple the train by holding the whistle button. It's like a certain combination of like a bunch of things, but yeah, I just decoupled the train with the electrocoupler. So I forgot about that. Yeah, up in up in train smoke. <laughs> get the uh, NW2 up and running first and then up top I might need smoke fluid in this guy too Nah, I think I'll be all right tonight. I just, uh, I haven't set off the smoke detector yet, but it will happen one of these days. Yeah, I love the uh, fan smoke units on these. I gotta find my Mega Steam smoke. That's like the best smoke ever. Rapid Rail Express. <laughs> yeah, I love running trains at like a moderate speed, but fast is sometimes fun, but not too fast. back. 
Yeah, 88 miles per hour. It's a science experiment. Here, I'll go up top and run, show you guys the uh, upper loop. I'm traveling weather. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's a. Uh, to say like it's some type of weather experiment. That's like the first thing he says. Yeah, I would love to put a DeLorean on the track. Maybe I can mod something like that. It'd be really cool. Yeah, I love Back to the Future. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Well, favorite three movies as a series, but... This is actually pretty slow for this uh, K4. We'll see it come around the track. Nice and slow. Well, this one. That's the K4. And then up top, the, uh, I think it's a 20, what is it? It's a 2026 up top. That's the air whistle. All right, RJ, no problem, man. We'll still be here. Yeah, the K4 is one of my favorites in the collection. And then my um, my post-war K4 is actually like one of the best running uh, post-wars that I own. I got the K4 going so slow. Whoops. I also like how the um, the prairie engine up top gives out like perfect smoke o's. It's kind of cool. I'll show you guys that. Wow, challenger. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't be able to fit a Challenger on this layout. Um, yeah, they're the perfect Smokos. You guys can see them in the back.
Yeah, I definitely need um God, what would I need? Like 072 radius turns for like a challenger. At least that. I mean, to make it look good. I mean, I have 042 on the outside. So the loop next to the uh, Cherry Hill Station there, which I got. Um, it's a Strasburg Cherry Hill Station. That um, has an 042 radius turn. So I think for a Challenger, I need like 72 or whatever the next one is. Like what? Is it 084? I forgot what it is. But yeah, I'm sure that's an awesome engine. That's um, challengers. Were they um, le or were challengers uh, Santa Fe Railroad, or is that Union Pacific? O thirty six. So you're using like the uh, what fast track? O thirty six radius fast track. Oh, so you guys fixed your 248. That's awesome. Yeah, I have a 248 sitting on the bench down there. It needs a, a whole overhaul. Union Pacific. Sorry, I wasn't sure. I forgot what the... Uh... Oh, God, what's the Santa Fe have that's like equivalent to it? I forgot. But yeah, Union Pacific. So you have the Challenger, the Big Boy, and then there's a couple other things in between. Yeah, the largest engine I have is actually, I'll spin you guys around, um, right there. It's um, it's a Baltimore and Ohio, whoops, here, I'll put the light on so you guys can see. One more, there we go. It's a B&O, um, everyone was telling me it was a Hudson. But it's huge. It's like it takes up three or four sections of fast track and it's full scale. And that very rarely runs because the tether on it is garbage. I love the engine. It's beautiful. It weighs a ton. It's all die cast like the tender. The tender's all die cast. The engine's all die cast. The wheels are spoked. You can see right through them. It has a firebox lighting effect. It has the... Uh, other smoke effect. I forgot what the smoke unit's called. It's basically a tube instead of like a, um, what do you call them? A bowl smoker or a fan driven. It's basically Williams smoke unit. So yeah. Yeah. I'd love a semi scale of that. It's just the price of it right now. I mean, it's going to be at least a thousand bucks. Um, maybe like a couple hundred if you find a used one. But that's the only issue like hold me back from getting something like that. I just need the uh, cash flow for other things at the moment. But yes, I will get an engine like that one day because um, I, I would love to have it on the collection. Uh, I love larger steam engines. I love smaller steam engines. I love pretty much all trains, but I just don't have the uh, the fundage to get that. So yeah, I can actually swap out. Uh, let's see. I won't swap out the K4 because that's going to be a pain because of the tether and everything. I'll swap out. Oh, man. Let's see. Maybe the engine on the center track, the uh, NW2. Get her going reverse. Yeah, I'll leave the set of cars there. I'm just going to swap out the engine. Yeah, I only bought one because it was heavily discounted and a little damaged. Yeah, my K4 was like 100 bucks because like the PS1 K4 you guys have seen going around. Um, I think he dropped it and the nose here. I'll, well, it's hard to see. I'll wait for it to come around. I'll actually, uh, I'll bring it around town. All right. So my K4, uh, when I received it, it's going to be kind of hard to see. 
So if you look at the uh, front there, you turn on the light. Um, yeah, and the speaker farts when it's done. It's, I guess it's the, the charge being depleted. So if you see this white in here, that's actually Gorilla Glue that I haven't painted over yet. So when I receive this train, it's a beautiful, um, beautiful O27. I call it a model in a way. It's a toy train, but it isn't. Um, it's a Rail King uh, PS1 K4. It's one of my favorites. So the front there where this glue seam is, this whole part here was broken off. Uh, it arrived like that in shipping and I got it off trains.com. It did say as is, and it was like the last picture was it broken. All the other pictures had it married up to it. It didn't look like it was broken as bad, but when I got it in the mail, I literally was like, what do I do? And, um, I just, the first thing I could think of, well, let's glue the thing back together. This is all die cast. Uh, this engine, the entire shell with the tender is all die cast metal. Uh, this part here, if you guys have ever taken one of these apart, this lifts off very carefully, but this whole bottom part is all one piece. So I had to take all of that apart, glue it back together. Now, one thing interesting with this engine is that your front, your uh, lead truck here, your uh, pilot wheels, I guess you could call them, or I guess they would be your lead, lead truck. Uh, these are mounted underneath the front. So I could not operate this engine without it because this is also connected, or these wheels here are connected to the frame. So it would have been kind of odd. There's a better shot of it. So yeah, these two um, are mounted to the frame. Yeah, I guess they are pilot wheels. So fun stuff. I mean, little things, um, you know, can be fixed. I was actually thinking about buying a new chassis at one point, but I got it glued. It works great. So I haven't had any issues. It just needs to be repainted using like an acrylic or something. So it doesn't mess up the glue joint. Uh, I might just leave it because it's working at the moment and it's hard to see when the trains are running anyways. So it's one of those things. If it's not that broken, don't fix it anymore. <laughs> so yeah, we'll swap out the uh, Chesapeake in the center there. Get something else running. Um, oh, the camera's tilted. Woohoo. And anyone new to the channel, I actually, um, I got some new camera gear or new to the stream. Sorry. I got some new camera gear. I ended up getting, let me turn the light off here. Spin you all around. So I ended up getting an Osmo action. Thanks to uh, RJ and JP. I uh, picked this up at b &H. Um, it's BH camera. I believe it's like they sell everything from like audio stuff, uh, audio visual electronics. But yeah, I picked this up BH. It was here in four days, which is amazing. Uh, these are very hard to find right now. These are the Osmo actions. Uh, it's a hot ticket right now because everyone's out vlogging and recording everything. Uh, Best Buy pretty much was sold out of these of these babies. So I'm gonna throw one of these on a box car. Or throw one of them in a out the uh, the difference from my really cheap webcam or not webcam but I got a really cheap action cam from Walmart. It's called um, oh man, it was uh, I don't even know anymore because it was so bad. Uh, the footage was absolute garbage, uh, and I really had to tweak it. So if you guys are um, veterans of my channel and you guys have seen the uh, like the trackside footage after like uh, Nick's reviews and stuff like that. I was using that little mini action cam. I had total chaos trying to get it rendered and everything. It basically the camera wanted to shoot in 4k 4k. It was complete garbage. The sound or the audio quality on it was horrible. The, uh, the 4k would not render to my computer. Hey Gus, how's it? Well, how's it going? Now you're back. Yeah, I bought a lot of stuff from BH and they yeah, they they always um they ship really fast. It's a great company. Uh, I believe it's it's family owned. Um there's a great story with them too. Um Humanity City Junction actually went through that whole story on his um on his channel. It basically the whole story, I believe it was something to do with um 
pretty much escaping from the Holocaust or something like that. And then coming over to the United States, starting that store. It's a um, Jewish owned operated business. And they've been here ever since the war. I mean, that's amazing. So uh, definitely an American, you know, American story there coming over here, um, you know, from wherever they were over in Europe. But I think that was an amazing story. But yeah, it's a great business. They sell everything and everything with cameras. Don't even go to Best Buy. Look up B&H first. If you can't find it on Amazon, sometimes Amazon ships really fast. Like this was not on Amazon until um, I think it was April 22nd. And today's date is the whatever, 20, I think today's like the 22nd or whatever. I forgot. Um, yeah, today's March 22nd. So a month would have had to wait for one of these babies and uh, they wanted more money. They wanted like 250 and these go for like 200 bucks. So yeah. Oh, Gus lost the stream. Yeah, we had tech tech difficulties before. I, I apologize for that. But yeah, so I'm going to throw a battery in here. Yes, it does have uh, interchangeable batteries. But if you guys are looking to record, maybe do some train stuff and throw this on um, a car, check out these cameras, these um, Osmo Actions. These go head to head with GoPro. Um, this model is um, basically... I think it's waterproof up to 11 meters. Don't quote me on that, but that's what the packaging said. So I'm not, I'm not going to go like snorkeling with this thing, like a million feet, you know, below the surface of the earth there, but I'll definitely take it on some adventures. If it gets wet, cool. I can do streams in the rain, get some uh, train action in the rain. I won't be afraid of losing my camera or my phone. So what, but yeah, so um, I'm going to throw this on a flat car, put a battery in here, get her rolling. But I still can't think of the other. Uh, it's driving me crazy. I forgot the um, cheap camera name that I had before. It's a Walmart brand. Something it's it's something tech, I think. But yeah, if if it's all you can afford, it's all you can you know, it's all you can get. Do it. Just learn how to operate the camera. You know, experiment. Throw it off a cliff or something. Get the footage that you need. And then, or save up your money and get something, you know, as affordable as this here compared to a GoPro. Like I said, these are head to head with GoPro right now. So yeah, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to throw a battery in here. All right. Got a battery right here. I'm going to load her up. And like I said, I'll upload this footage later. And, you know, I'd love to hear what you guys uh, think about the footage compared to the old camera that I had. I still have it, but I want to like, I was telling RJ 78, I, I want to like put it on a railroad track and like really uh, put it through its paces. Not this camera, not this, not my baby here. Oh, it's on. Cool. So um, yeah, I can actually record, record the record the stream. So yeah. So let's get the uh, flat car. Where are you? The media car. It's underneath. Whoops. There it is. Oh, some other car came out with it. So this is the uh, media car. I've got this. Um, all right. It's almost 10 o'clock. I had to check up on the time. So yeah, this, I had a GoPro mount on here, but the mount ended up hitting everything on the platform, getting snagged on wires. But now I ripped the mount off and I'm left with this little piece of 3M tape, double side tape, which I can, uh, put back whenever but yeah i'll get the uh let's see let's get footage of the k4 first i'll move that up yeah, there she goes all right Oh, Nikki's making fish. Oh, no. All right. So let's put our media car here. And this is a uh, 6511 flat car. This would have had um, Vivitar. Yeah, so it's, it's a Walmart brand. So, hey, if it's all you guys can afford and you want to get out there filming immediately, go ahead and do it. I mean... 
it, it's like $80 or something that for that camera. Um, just make sure you have it set up right to accept with your computer. If you want to get out there filming, use your phone. If you guys are, uh, I know some of my viewers are younger. They don't, may not have cell phones yet. Get a cheap camera, get, get out there and film. Like I had to learn a lot of basic stuff using the Vivitar. And to be honest with you, this, um, the Osmo is user friendly. It's not, you can't get really, you can get lost in the settings if you want, but it has a lot of auto mode. So literally you can pick this thing up, put it on a, uh, a GoPro mount and just go walk around. It's great. So we're going to get this filming here. I'll film. All right, guys, here's the stream of the stream. I'm going to put you on a flat car. Here we go. Hopefully it won't hit anything. See, so yeah, I'll move that up. And like I said, I'll have this footage up later, maybe not today or tomorrow, but sometime this week. And I'll just write it as the test footage so you guys can check it out. And there it goes. <laughs> yeah, they should have like a virtual rail fan car. That'd be a lot of fun. I'm going to get some... Uh, I'm going to replace the uh, Chessie real quick. Wave hi to the camera as it goes around. All right. All right, everyone. So I got a uh, Southern Pacific, looks like an F7A unit on the middle track now. I'll put you guys over here so you can see it come around. It's got like a buzzer horn, just like the old uh, post-war stuff. All right, guys, let's make it into a night run and go through the, uh, the light app here. There we go. Oh, I forgot to turn on the crossing gates. So let's see those go off too. Yeah, RJ, I put the uh, Osmo action up on the track to get some uh, test footage here. I'm going to post the test footage up and see what you guys think.
Yeah, I forgot about the possessed gates. There they go. Here, I'll get you guys in there. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Both at the same time. Here, I'll... Uh... I'll put the uh, media car up on the... Uh... Up on the uh, Southern Pacific. Oops. Sounds like my steam engine's peeing. So let's get the uh, Southern running again. I don't know what the train was doing. It's just making a whole lot of noise. <laughs> blow the smoke away from the smoke detector it's like no <laughs> get back All caught up on the table. It was running through its sound program, so that's pretty cool. Camera up on top. Oh, God, you can see all the smoke on the, uh, the beacon. It looks like a disco up here. Look at that. Switch out the top engine to something different. So,
Hey, Randall, how's it going? Just swapping out some trains here. Oh, it's all good, Randall. It's all good, man. All right, I'm going to get the uh, Southern Pacific running down there. I got the Virginian up top. I think it's an SD40. We'll get that running. There we go. A little bit different up there. It's been a while since I ran those Virginians, so give them some runtime up there. Yeah, there's the uh, hobo camp up top. Thayer subdivision. You guys running more trains and stuff like that? <laughs> yeah the um yeah the alien sub there i can show you guys in a second so i'm actually going to switch the uh camera angle around uh, on a, the uh upper line there it is perfect timing See, I'll show you guys in a second. So the Hobo Camp is complete for now. I um, actually shoved an LED inside the fire pit. And I got the uh, black light effect working really well. So check this out. Yeah, the alien's still trying to do some damage. <laughs> I 
So I'm actually going to swap the uh, camera out. Well, actually, I'll put the camera on the other side of the Virginian. But yeah, I should have this footage up this week sometime. I got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I've got to upload an adventure this week. And then, oh, it's from Saturday. We we're at the Union Canal messing around with um, Matt, Matt PG and then also uh, uh, Randy from Emerald Sound. We're out, uh, I think, Berks County, Pennsylvania. It was awesome. Got to upload that. And then yesterday I did test footage and uh, spent a few hours at Strasburg just looking around. Um, I have a Strasburg trip in the making or uh, the plans are in the making right now. So it's going to be a big uh, shooting day, basically uh, all over the place. So, yeah. Oh, the hobo setup. Yeah, it's kind of funny. So um, with the hobo setup, the aliens from a matchbox set from like the 90s it was one of my uh, one of my gifts. It, it came with like a space shuttle and all kinds of cool stuff. The um, figurines are actually just uh, like really old plastic filled people. I painted up recently just uh, messed around with some like oil paints and stuff like that. Uh, he said a guy you work with was hauling a crew take back to the depot. And one of the crewers said that he's got a memo that's going to start getting busy. Yeah. That's, unfortunately that's how it is. Like when the weather gets warmer and everything, it's things tend to get busier, but um, same over my, my job right now. Yeah. Randy, Randy is uh, the, it, he has so much knowledge. He's like a walking history book. And such a great person, Matt, Matt as well, um, you know, had so much fun. It was great meeting them and uh, just hanging out, walking the trails and everything. But yeah, Randy knows so much of that area and the canal history and the entire trail. It was like uh, walking with history. So it was so much fun. Um, I really need to read up on my local history. <laughs> because <laughs> I know a lot from where I came from. I like um, outside of like Maryland and stuff like that. I know tons of information, but yeah, he is, he is a walking book of knowledge. Um, that was so much fun. Yeah. Matt, Matt's great too. Um, knows a ton about stuff there too. All the parks and everything. Uh, it was awesome going out there. Unfortunately, my camera gear did not come in yet. And it was so funny. So Matt ordered, um, so anyone watching, Matt PG ordered a bunch of stuff uh, for his mic setup. I think it was um, part of a road system, um, road mic system. It was on probably on the same truck as my items, and they were both running late. We were supposed to get our camera stuff that Friday evening or last Friday evening. Everything arrived Saturday and it was like the funny thing was as soon as we left to go on site or in the field to film, our stuff arrived. So it was very frustrating for both of us because he's like, it's like, man, your stuff's probably on the same truck as mine. It departed the same facility. It was called like Lewisbury, Pennsylvania. And it was it was interesting because I called FedEx. I was like, can I pick my stuff up? And they said, no, it's already on the truck. It's already sorted. So. Yeah, it's just it's funny how that is sometimes. But yeah, yeah, learn as you go. Yeah, for sure. I gotta definitely brush up on my history though around this area. Uh it's kind of been shown here recently, and the number of double stack manifest trains have been increasing. Yeah, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff on CSX. They're running more um what do they call like DPUs or distributed power units in the center, instead of running like three or four engines, uh, they're all like GE evolution, um, engines, nothing like GP, like 38s or forties. They're running all evolutions, except now they're running one in the center, uh, DPU unit, and then they're running one liter engine. So, uh, it's, it's interesting how they're changing it up and it's all because of precision schedule railroading. Unfortunately, uh, it's, it's really, uh, killing the industry. I was actually talking to an engineer yesterday at Strasburg. I ran into a, um, a Lehigh Valley engineer. He's long retired out of the industry, but he um, was talking about that as well. Uh, it was great meeting him as well and talking to him about his experiences. Hey, good night, Henry. Good luck. I, I know how that, um, 
<laughs> I remember those days. So yeah, just uh, take it easy, study hard, man, and you'll get through it. Uh, just you know, take a lot of notes. That's the best knowledge I can give you. <laughs> Yeah, not a problem, Jamie. Yeah, Jamie is uh, extremely busy. <laughs> She's got a lot going on with uh, everything. So, but yeah, I'm glad you guys are all here. And uh, I'm going to try to move this camera around really quick, get some more footage, and see if I can run something else. I'm going to replace the um, K4 out with something else, give the engine a break starting to smell like burning plastic up here from all the smoke fluid so yeah let me change this out and i'll actually roll this whoops i can actually uh just use the whoops Yeah, one of these engines, the E unit, is locked in forward. It's not the Virginian, obviously, but it's another one that I have. All right, are we on? Nope. On and back. All right. That's all good to go. I'm going to swap out the K4 real quick. What's your go brand of trains? Okay, so, oh God, yeah, you open up a can of worms, bud. Uh, let's see. Oh crap. Okay, so the newer Lionel stuff, I'm very hesitant with, but I love old Lionel, like uh, 1950s. Well, actually, I'm gonna go further back. Anything from like 1920 and up to like, I'd say like 1960. The stuff is like bulletproof. It's lasted forever. I, I mean, I've got a train in my living room that's a hundred and just turned a hundred years old this year or so. Yeah, I, I heard. Um, I heard that from. I think Jay said something about that. I'm I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, hopefully you can get that replaced with it's in with the uh, what 100 days or whatever, or you get a year. But yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that because they are quite the investment. He said it was the, um, what, the Budweiser, your Budweiser Express train or whatever. Because I, I saw that video that you had with... Um, you had like the uh, Western steam engine, like the Western style. And then you had some other stuff like the Harry Potter train. Like that was an awesome video. They're adding DPUs to trains here on the Thayer sub too. They'll also keep a man set of helpers. Yeah. So they didn't have helpers where I was. It was all DPUs, which are uh, basically just a center <laughs> engine of this like 300 car 300 plus car train. They, they just shoved the DPU in it. Oh, Randall said hello. I will say hello. So Nikki's upstairs now. Uh, just chilling. All right. Yeah, I could smell. Yeah, Nikki's uh, cooking all kinds of stuff down there. No, I don't want to make fish. I just didn't want to go back. Yeah. So it kind of tastes like licorice. So oh god. Oh man. But yeah, so um Revenge of the Apocalypse said um other brand of trains. So just the newer Lionel stuff. I have some new stuff, new ish. Like I said, I'm a little hesitant of it. Um they do have the one year warranty, which I wish they had extended to like two years because some of the electronics, unfortunately things break very easily. Like I said, I'm very sorry to hear that engine broke. Um, hopefully you can get it replaced. Uh, but my other go-to brands at the moment, MTH stuff seems to be pretty hardy. If you can get your hands on it, um, 
if you can buy any MTH stuff, I'd recommend picking it up. Uh, I've got two MTH engines. They're perfectly fine. No problems at all. Um, pretty much. No, oh, you know, Williams trains too are great. And they're built by Bachman. Uh, like all the older Williams I have, they don't have like the fancy sound systems like the newer ones that have, um, what was that sound system called? Do you remember that? The Williams? Oh, the True Blast? Yeah, True Blast sound. Yeah, I don't have any of the True Blast stuff. Yeah, MTH is going out of business, but their products are amazing. So um, compared to like the Lionel boards, like the circuit cards, MTH's boards, from my knowledge, are all Korean, and they seem to be a little bit better or well thought out. All the uh, Lionel boards are Chinese, so there is a little bit of a gap there. I like um, the engine Jay brought over to fix up was actually a Korean board. Like the uh, circus train had a Korean board, and I actually told him, I said, "Yeah, you're lucky." It's right before they all switched to China, but yeah, MTH is fine. Like I. If you find anything like it's a good price, I'd pick it up. Hey, Lionel Collector, how's it going? I was uh, swapping out trains. I got a new web, or not webcam, but I got a new uh, action cam. I've been running up on the upper track, so we're going to get the Virginian moving again. I think it's an SD40. And I also hear a cat coming up here. Oh, God. Yeah, following Nikki around. So let's get that rolling. Whoops. And I would say 90% of my collections lying out. It's just older. It's uh, from basically 1920 up to like 1990. And then I have a newer engine. I'll put it on the track. I'll show you guys. It's I've, I've put it on the tracks before. It's a, um, it's an EP5 New Haven celebration series that um, is all decked out with features. Ooh, Virginian sounds crunchy. There we go. All right, I'll switch that out real quick. All right, I got the EP5 set up on the outer track.
Hey, Roger, how's it going? Um, with the Atlas situation, I'm actually kind of happy that they're getting it because, um, let's see. I'm actually going to stop the uh, Virginian up top real quick. Grab the camera. Oh, crap. I forgot the, uh, the gates picked up the... Uh, EP5 back there, so the gates were down. Um, with the whole situation with Atlas and M MTH, oh, there we go. EP5's done. So, yeah, um, it's a weird situation because I feel like I haven't, I haven't seen a whole lot of Atlas stuff out. Like one of my favorite train shops in Hanover, he's got some really cool Atlas stuff. He's got beer cars that just came out fresh off the uh, press there. Um, they look really nice, but they are expensive. It's like 50, 60 bucks a car. Um, the detailing is quite nice, but I don't own any Atlas. Um, yeah, I don't actually own any Atlas stuff, but I have seen the quality, you know, the quality seems nice and everything. Um, actually I own Atlas and N scale, but not, not anything in like O scale. But I'm, I'm happy they got it instead of Lionel. I know it sounds kind of mean, but I feel like there needs to be some type of competition out there between Lionel, Atlas, Williams, um, even though MTH is slowly fizzling out. What's your favorite virtual rail fan camera? Oh, man. I would say this is going to be really biased. I'd say Strasburg's. <laughs> Here, give me a second. I turn off this camera. Camera's really hot right now. Um, turn this off there. By no means am I an O scale expert, but if Atlas can take full advantage of MTH Premier O scale tooling, it would do wonders. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be. Um, I, th I think it's going to be a great, um, great product line compared to what, you know, Lionel's premier stuff or whatever. It, it's expensive and I'm afraid of the quality control. Uh, I think Atlas is going to do it right. Oh, I got to get the cat off the train garden. Here, baby. Here, come here. Oh, you're happy. Oh, oh. Oh, Spin this around and show you guys what I caught. What you caught? Uh oh. I've caught a Gemma cat. Say hi, Gemma. Godzilla. She's going to bite me in the face. Oh, she punched me. All right. She's like, don't think I'm going to jump up there again. She's going for it. Yeah, it's whatever. Um, I would say, yeah, Strasburg Real Fan Camera is my, my favorite because. Not only do you get, oh, she's, whoa, hey, cat's messing with the camera now. It's her revenge. She saw that you can move the, move the feet, so now she. Uh, can you, uh, can you rescue her? Thank cat's you. trying to compromise the stream. Sorry, fellows and ladies. Sorry, all out there. Um, here we go. Crisis averted. The cat is being removed. Not for long. So my favorite rail fan camera is the Strasburg one because not only do you get the Strasburg railroad during the day, you get the um, you get their uh, what's it Oxford. Their Oxford trolley is up and back all the time, which is really cool to see during the week when they're not running the steam engines full time. And during the day, you also get the Amtrak's like zooming through there. Yeah, Lancaster, Oxford, and Southern. Yeah, I've ridden that before. It's been a long time. I just filmed at Strasburg yesterday, so everyone look out for that video. It should be out. I want to say uh, Thursday or Friday. It should be out. And what are you doing? Playing. You're playing. So I, I've ridden that trolley. It's been about man. It's been about ten years or so. It was a private tour. It was when the um, 
the trolley was fully restored and basically uh, one of Pennsylvania's local television people came out to film it. After they were done filming their thing, they offered us a ride on it. And because my dad took me up there, I think it was like Easter week or something. I had off and uh, we went all the way up to the Amtrak line. The engine actually broke down right in front of one of the uh, Amish farms. And then he ended up having to uh, like crank start it back. And then we went back to Strasburg. So it was awesome. Uh, I ended up cramming myself in the front of that train. And the coach seats are extremely small because originally, if you guys don't know this, that um, little street or it's really like a speeder trolley hybrid. It's one of the first diesel uh, locomotives ever. Oh, good night, RJ. I'll, thank you for stopping in and uh, have you know safe travels. I know you guys drove a lot today. So, yeah, be safe out there, man. <laughs> but the uh, Lancaster, Oxford and Southern... Um, I uh, got the cat again. Oh, great. Oh, what did she just hey, can you get her down, please? Um, she's not gonna let me because I've got a lot of fragile stuff up there now. So, yeah, so that's actually one of the oldest, if not the oldest, trolley in the world, according to what they said. And originally, that was meant for a narrow gauge railroad. Um, when they built the engine, they said it was too fast. And the max speed of it was around 42 miles an hour, which was super fast for its time. I don't know how old that engine is. Um, it does have a coupler on it. I believe it has a coupler, but it's meant to pull like very, very light, uh, very, very light freight. It's actually a combo. So it has a sitting area and then has a, um, a freight part, which was mostly for dairy products and mail what that's what they were telling us like very fast shipping items nothing too crazy um uh, mike announced his retirement and the closure of mth more or less recapping what has went down yeah it's really sad like i talked to i I, said, I think i said this last week's stream um their warehouse is being liquidated and it's outside of columbia maryland which is right you know not too far away from where i grew up so I'm hoping, hoping they can give other lines, like other manufacturers a chance, not just like the premier stuff, but the rail King stuff. I don't know who's going to get it. I've heard many channels say that Menards might get some of the tooling for the cars. If that's the case, so be it. That's really cool. But I don't see that happening. Um, I wish some luck though. I love Menards. I, I just did an unboxing of Menards cars. Uh, and for anyone stopping in, I got the CSX modern tanker, single, um, single dome tanker car. I got a Norfolk Southern Pennsylvania hopper that I can spin around here. And also got a merchandise, uh, box car, all Pennsylvania, except the CSX. And I love these cars so far. They're holding up. They look amazing. Uh, I'll feature them in the next next reviews as well, so you guys can get a closer look. But so far, I'm very impressed. So they they do remind me of the Rugged Rails series without the sprung trucks. But anything MTH, I can stand behind them. I've had zero this many issues with MTH, big old zero issue with MTH stuff compared to the newer Lionel, um, MPC Lionel, like with the plastic. Uh, we were talking about it earlier. Someone said. Uh, I forgot what they said. I think they said like toothpick couplers or something like that. I've had issues with them. Uh, they're a nightmare. Like the train will just be running around. All of a sudden the coupler just goes, pah, just detaches like, whoa, hey. And if you're doing a live stream or doing a video and you're not paying attention and you're talking to people and those cars go back around and the engine kisses the end of the other train, you have a giant derailment mess. You know, it could destroy your scenery and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it's it's interesting, you know. Yeah, I don't think Lionel's gonna get it. I think there's too much uh, healthy competition if they give it to someone else. They need to make basically. I think what they're gonna try to do, they're gonna give it to someone else, and it's gonna make Lionel run for their money. It's gonna make them do a little bit harder work. 
make some products that don't explode on the first or second time around the track or die instantly. I hands down, I've, I've, like I said, I love older Lionel 1920. Well, even earlier, if I found an earlier 1900s Lionel engine, cool. Sign me up. I'll pay for it. You know, I'll, I'll run it around my track, but anything from, let's just say this for argument's sake, 1920 to like 1989. Sure. I'll buy it. You know, I'm, I'm all for it, but any of the newer stuff, I'm just very apprehensive with. And it shouldn't be like that. I love trains. I love everything about O scale and other scale trains. I just, if I'm going to spend X hundred hundreds amount of dollars for an engine, it better run and it better not explode. And it's, it's upsetting too. I've, I've had it happen. Um, I had a Western set. I, th I think I've told you guys before it was brand new out of the box, ready to run set with the, uh, big old uh, dome stack and everything. It was like a Wild West that had beautiful cars. They're nicely weighted. They had sprung trucks, but it had two like um, Union Pacific wood slat passenger cars from the Civil War era. It had a dynamite car that had these containers and it said dynamite and the caps would come off and it had uh, little red sticks of dynamite in there. The next car was a horse car. It had horses. When it would turn, the horses would stick their heads out the window. It's very classic toy train Lionel. The engine was a little wonky at first. So I put it on the track, ran it around with the track and transformer they provided me with. It was a ZW transformer, just like the one I've run my top loop. I set the engine on the track. It ran around three times. Okay. And then the smoke unit caught on fire not just like a little puff puff blue smoke this was like full on fire blew it out i was like okay that's messed up then everything else just went like the transformer went instantly and also i forgot what else happened but we returned it we called the manufacturer it was actually um not the manufacturer we called the train shop which was modeltrainstuff.com also known as mb klein we walked into the stores before they went online only. I returned it. They gave me another one. They said, cool, we'll exchange it. No worries. This happens sometimes. I got the one home. The engine that they gave us back in the box, they put the, the, um, the draw bars were calibrated at the same. So the train did this instead of like staggered like that. It, it did that. So it actually jumped off the track. And I was like, well, this is messed up. They didn't put the wheels on right. Brand new out of the box. All the seals and everything were there. Then all of a sudden, I noticed that the cars were squeaking because I thought, okay, you know, I get it. We'll return it. But the cars had the pickups for the lights and they were angled out. So they were scraping the inside of the wheels. There were no screws. There were just little pins holding them in like little pop rivets. So there's no way to fix that. It was a nightmare. I'm like, these are brand new sets out of the box. They were, I think they were like 300 bucks. Yeah, I know it's a, it's a ready to run set, but if you give that to a kid, like I was a, you know, I was in high school or whatever. If you give that to a little kid on Christmas day and they're looking forward to buy a train and the train dies on Christmas day, it's going to be a nightmare. And it's going to ruin that kid forever. He'll never want to play with trains again. I swear, you know, they're going to say, oh, it broke on the first time. They'll never want to play with trains again. So yeah, that's my speech with that stuff. You know, I love Lionel, old stuff, Lionel. The new stuff, I just can't really get behind. I don't trust it. That's all. It's an opinion. I think it's a great um, a great part of history with toy trains and everything. They're they're an empire, but they, they got to get it together. Uh, I am upset that MTH is going out because even they're ready to run sets, I have had zero issues with them too. They are more expensive, but um, they do last longer. I'll actually, just for argument's sake, I'll put an MTH starter set engine on the track. You guys can check it out. It's it's under here somewhere. It's an old, it's a Penty. It's about 10 years old. And runs like a champ. Uh, MTH could run as a downsized version with the Premier lines. Yeah. So I guess they would just run as um, like Rail King. That's fine with me. I mean, it's it's a great product. 
And Rail King, according to my MTH guy that I talk to a lot, um, Rail King will work on most 031 curves. That's what he told me. I'm not sure if that's true. Or 036, I forgot. It's one of the smaller radius turns. He said it'll work, so it's very compatible with, I would say, 90% of people that own a train uh, have smaller radius curves. So let me get a... Uh, I'll get the starter engine running for you guys on the uh, on the track. Let me get a drink of water. Oh, man. Yeah, a lot of NPC stuff too is kind of wonky, but um, like the Virginian up top, very simple. It's got the drum E unit, and those have given people problems. This one's okay. I've got a bunch of other drum E units up on the shelf, so. Yeah, scale trains and S scale. So I would like to see S scale come back. I don't own any S gauge or S scale stuff, but man, if they come back with it, cool. I mean that that would be awesome. I'd love to see a resurgence in that because back in the day, if if you guys were new to the hobby or whatever, Lionel and American Flyer were like this, like all the time, like boom, 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 and then Lionel ended up buying American Flyer. <laughs> you know, they just ate the competition. Uh, way later in time, though, I'm talking, you know, back in the post-war era, you know, American Flyer and Lionel were head to head. Um, American Flyer did have um, a couple downsides because it is two rail. So you get two rails instead of three. And how Lionel track works or three rail track is that your center pin is your hot and your outer two are your returns. So you can do all kinds of crazy loops and stuff and it won't short out or um, basically ground out on itself. When you have two rail, you have to deal with that. You have to deal with blocks and stuff. But that's the only thing. Technically, S gauge or S scale is, from what I've heard from people, it's more prototypically correct just because of scaling and all of that. It's easier to scale, I guess. I, I It's what I've heard and not can't really stand behind it, but uh, I, I do know people that are huge S scale fans or S gauge and they're all AM flyer guys. And uh, a couple of weird things. Like I have heard that what really didn't help out AM flyer back in the day is that they didn't have knuckle couplers compared to Lionel. They had those uh, like pin couplers. There's like two hooks like this and they come in and grab in the middle like that. Or like on these uh, pins that would stick out, they grab on there. So it is kind of a different beast, so to say. Like Lionel's got the nice knuckle couplers now. Uh, back in the post-war era, you could see those coming out. In the pre-war era, you had a bunch of weird metal couplers. They would just basically have two sides like this, and they would clamp on each other. They have a hook like, like that, and it would clamp on top. Or sorry, like that. Sorry, the camera's a little weird. Just a bunch of different uh, progressive takes before they got to the knuckle coupler that um, really kind of hurt um, the S gauge market. And that's what I've seen on a lot of like interviews and documentaries with Lionel Trains. So it's very interesting how that comes about. But here, yeah, I'm going to grab that um, MTH uh, starter set. It does have a couple rail sounds. It has a chugging, I believe, it has a chug feature, a horn. And a bell. That's pretty much it. It doesn't have like the PS1, but it does have a circuit card space for the PS1 circuit. So if you want to upgrade that engine, you can. It also has an upgraded slot for um, uh, what is it? DCS or uh, direct direct command system, I believe. Uh, that's MTH's brand instead of using like Lion Chief or um, Legacy. So let me go grab that. It's actually right under here. You got some of those cars. What, like the old um, Lion O cars? They're great. I, I've got a ton of them under here. It's just kind of fun seeing how the stuff progressed over time. All right, I gotta find, here she is. Whoops. There we go. All 
All right, guys, give me a second. I gotta attach the tether from the uh, loco to the tender. I did do a review on this engine and it's set, and the tether does kind of suck. Like, to be honest with you, it it's uh, it's at a disadvantage. But once it's in, it's in. Oops, I forgot what's on this outer track. She's not going to like that. Well, great. Finally done working for the night. Been listening to the whole time through. Look, oh, look up stuff. All those new cars. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, the NS Hopper. So, um, I forgot who picked it out. Was it, I don't know if it was Randall or someone else, but they picked out that the hopper doors are actually painted incorrectly. They should be painted yellow instead of brown, which I thought was kind of funny. I didn't even pick up on that. So thank you to my viewers for, for picking that out. I was uh, kind of lost on that one. I got to pull the other train around. Oh, can you grab her, please? Get her away from that stuff. Yeah, the cat just jumped up on my camp. I'm like, I just built that. I don't want her messing that up. Here, um, just take her down. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it scared me because I'm like, I just built the uh, the hobo camp up there and the cat's like destroying it. So. No, she was not going to destroy it. It's, it's, it's fragile. It's fragile stuff. So, I'm going to roll here. Yeah, just take her down, <laughs> please. All right, look at that. Rolling around the attic. So, let's get the engine working here. I have to turn it around. It got stuck on the switch, so it's all good. It does have one heck of a smoke unit on here. And whoops. Here, I'll lower it down so you guys can see. See the engine there? And are we coupled? No, we're not coupled. Give me a what's that? All right. Oops. There we go. Now we're coupled in. Cool. So I'll spin this around real quick. And for a starter set, this engine does have a uh, fan smoke unit, which is very cool. Oops. Oh, she decoupled. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Trying to get the train to run in reverse. Did a couple that time? Yes. All right. So I'm going to get the train to run in the correct direction here. And this smoker is actually better than the, uh, the K4. It also has like chugging smoke, which is pretty cool. For a starter set, I mean, it's pretty awesome.
Oh, and the headlight's not working for some reason. But other than that, everything else on here works very nicely. It's old. It's uh, about 10 years old. Yeah, it gives out a great thing of smoke for it. Yeah, it's filling up the whole attic with smoke. So let's get these trains running one last time. And then we'll call the stream in a couple. Yeah, the MTH actually just disconnected from its train. He's just smoking up a mirror. Yeah, it's all smoky because that engine. <laughs> 
Yeah, that MTH engine just smoked out this whole room. You guys can see it in the camera. It's all hazy up here. It's like it's my uh my disco beacon. Look at that. It's actually picking up on the haze in the room. So the MTH engine, it's got a great smoke unit in it. I don't know what's going on with the headlight, but sometimes those burn out. So it decided to burn out today. <laughs> so um, that happens, you know, it's wear and tear items. And that is the original bulb to that engine. So, uh, oh, well, I'll have to replace it. Uh, let's see. So there's a signal that might be already taking shape because like I told Nick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Double stack trains and all that stuff. Oh, there go the crossing gates. So I'm going to turn them off so I don't get scared. Whoops, wrong one. Wrong switch. <laughs> yeah, a lot of trains, like I said, um, around like where I work and stuff, they're stacking them up. They're doing DPUs and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. All because of precision schedule railroading and... Uh, they're also blocking level crossings like the level crossing outside of my work. That's a main road. It's it's basically route one. It turns into route one. Um, it's called Washington, you know. So, yeah, that's it's a major highway through the whole country. But when it gets through where, um, where I work, it's a major highway to get to other. Well, it's not a highway, but it's a major road to get to other highways. Um the level crossing there was blocked for about 45 minutes for a trash train. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's just with a trash train. They waited. It was like 45 minutes. No, uh, you know, excuse me, no movement at all. It was insane. So I'm thinking, okay, with like COVID stuff going on, what happens if there's an ambulance that has to get across the tracks? What happens if there's a fire or a crash on the other side of those tracks? It's going to be impossible, you know, to get these trains to move. Oh, you're finally getting the rivet counter. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully one of these days I want to get the stream yard working and you guys can pop in and like show us what you're doing because I, I try getting stream yard to work on the computer but it, it's going to cost money per month or I only do one stream yard stream a month because you can only stream for like, I think three hours a week uh, or something like that. I'll have to look it up. I'm not going to do it now because the stream might get corrupted again, but um, yeah, if I do stream yard, you guys can pop in, show us what you're working on, have some trains running around and then uh, just let some other people in or if you want to model something and have a word to say, that'd be great. I'm thinking about doing that like once a month starting like the summertime, but I really need some time to like figure out the software and make sure it's, um, you know, everyone's comfortable with it. I'd also put an age restriction on there. No one, basically no one younger than 18 because I, for reasons. Um, so I wouldn't want anyone younger than 18 on on the stream yard stream even if they're accompanied by an adult if it's like gfw trains i understand it's him and his father that's different but any single user that's under they would not be eligible to participate in the stream um because stream yard uh they do i believe they do ask for an age and all that i don't want to you know i don't want anything bad to happen so it would be 18 up come in for a little bit so what you're working on, run some trains, stop in, say hi, let maybe like two or three people at a time in the stream and uh, continue on. Because there are some channels like um, Humanity City Junction. He does the same thing. It's like a collab every time, um, you know, every time someone comes in, they show what they're working on. They step out, you know, have a good conversation. Yeah, it's just. Just for legal reasons, I wouldn't want anyone 18 in the stream for the stream yard stuff. Um, it's it's just a you know formality.
All right. But guys, it's about 11.04. I'm going to call the stream because I have work tomorrow very early. I got to get out and drive around the earth. Oh, yeah, parent. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, that might be, you know, that might be fine. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if there's an adult there, yeah, that's cool. It's just, um, I'm just trying to cover myself legally, especially doing YouTube stuff. Um, cause this is not a YouTube for kids channel either. I know, um, there is an option to do that, but I, I wasn't interested, but this is a family channel too. Like for like language based and content based, it will always be a family channel, but for like meetups and stuff, I just, I prefer to work with people that are at an adult age just for, uh, for legal reasons. Like I said, it's formalities. It's nothing against any of my viewers. Um, you guys are all great. It's just a formality, but anyways, for tonight, I want to thank all of you for joining in. I think now I have about 160 subscribers. So I want to thank all of my new and old subscribers. You guys are all amazing guys, girls, everyone. Um, you know, I can't, um, can't thank you guys enough for all the support and love you guys give me every Monday and also just watching all the crazy content I come up with. But um, this week I will have the Union Canal video up and that's going to feature Matt PG, not MPG. And it will also feature Randy from Emerald Sound Production. Both great guys. They're part of my YouTube family now. Same with uh, RJ78 and JP Videos. But thank you all for coming out tonight. And um, if you guys are new, if you guys are watching the replay, always consider subscribing and um, always hit the bell because you never know. <laughs> you don't want to miss anything. So uh, definitely make sure you hit the bell. So, all right. But until then, I'll see you guys in uh, future streams and videos out there. Thank you so much. Hey, Jamie, thank you so much for coming in. Gus, thank you so much for being here. Henry, um, Randall, stay safe out there on the rails. Thank you so much. Yeah, I forgot to mention that too. Anyone watching the replay? Um, my band is playing a show in Baltimore. There's an online stream available. Um, the band's called The Noise. If you'd like to watch a virtual show, you can purchase a virtual ticket. It's $10 and all of the money goes directly to the band. There is no middleman. All the fundage goes to us directly. We've worked so hard for this. Um, it's been a, over a year. We haven't played a show. But if you like to support and um, see us virtually, um, I can put a link in the description after the video closes. We did sell out the venue because so many people wanted to see us. But we were also sharing the tickets with another band. So yes, we had about 30 plus uh, in-person tickets sold. But we sold approximately about 10 live stream tickets at this time. So we'll see how it goes. Sing you oh, West Plains audio. Oh, geez. Yeah, more signal issues. But all right, guys, I'm going to call the stream. Thank you so much for coming out. And I'll see you all in uh, future content of mine. Stay tuned for uh, more adventures. Have a great night. Thank you so much.